Hello, I'm Steve Olson, the Manager of Training Services for Mesa. In this video, I'd like to walk you through the process of how to add a custom I property to a parts list. Let me start by setting up the scenario for you. We have a custom I property on a lot of our files, and we want that custom property to show up in our parts list because that custom property represents where in our warehouse that part is stored. So we wanna be able to have it on the drawing so somebody picking parts can just look at the drawing and know where to grab it. It's a custom I property, so it's a little bit trickier to add to our parts list. Also, another scenario here I wanna kinda of throw at you or another wrinkle to the scenario is this is something we wanna have from now on. If I was gonna do it on a one on a case by case scenario, it's not that difficult to add it for a one-time use, but maybe this is something we want permanently added. The reason that becomes a little bit more tricky is parts list and the, what's on them is controlled by a style. So we wanna make sure that if we create a new style or the adjustment to the style is then added back to our style library. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna make sure that my style library is set to read write as opposed to read only. So I'm gonna to go to my projects and I've got my active project here and you'll see that it says use style library read only. That is my tip, my recommendation for normal setting because you don't want users inadvertently making changes to the style library. But you can see here my project is set to read only. I'm using a vault project so for me to be able to make a change to this project I have to check it out. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and say done here. How I typically check my project out is I basically just open up or start any file. It doesn't matter what file. I just am doing this so I can then change to my vault tab here, right click on my project and say check out. I really don't care about this file. I can go ahead and just close it. I'm just using that file to get my project checked out. Now if I go back to my project, I can go to this read only, right click and say read write. Now I'll have the ability to save changes to styles back to my style library. So I wanna now open up my template. I don't wanna go to file new. I wanna actually browse out and open my template. Um, I actually recently had it open, so it's gonna show up here underneath my recent documents. For you, that could be any number of locations. If, you, if I'm hovering there, you can see it's actually buried underneath my public documents. That's where templates are, or the default templates are for Inventor. So if you're using the default templates, that's where yours are gonna be. So now I need to make that change to my style. So I'm gonna go to Manage here. I'm gonna go to my Style Editor. I'm gonna come down here to Parts List. And I'm just gonna copy what I would be using probably by default. By default, we use this parts list ANSI. That's what the default template is set to use. So I'm gonna select that, I'm gonna say new. It's gonna allow me to then create a new style based off of that parts list ANSI. And I'll just call mine parts list with stock location. I'm gonna go ahead and say okay. And to add that column, I'm gonna to go to my column chooser. And obviously it's not gonna be listed here because this is all of our default properties that we have. I'm gonna come down here, down here and hit new property. It's gonna give me a dialog box where I can click and add a new property. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter stock location. This is gonna be case sensitive and space sensitive. So make sure you spell it exactly the way that you are. Uh, everywhere else that you're using it. I'm gonna go ahead and say, okay. And now I'll add it. If I wanna move it up or move it down, that's what these buttons are here for. I'm gonna go ahead and say, okay. You can see I can even set the width. I noticed that my property, I, I call it, uh, or I, I capitalize only the first word. If I wanted to format this column so that it matches everything else with all caps, I can do that. I'll say OK, and I'll save my style here. Now, one thing to be aware of is, by default, 
this template is set to use parts list ANSI as its default parts list. If I want to change it so my parts list with the stock location is the default parts list style, I can go to my object defaults. I can scroll down here and find where parts list is listed. And you can see here right now it's using parts list ANSI as the, the default style. I'll just change this to my parts list with stock location. And I'll kind of click out here so it accepts that. And I can then save this as well. Let's go ahead and close this. And let's go ahead and save our template. Now, one other thing that I'll need to do is that style is only in this template. The style library kind of gives me the ability to control what's happening in the drawings and also gives me the ability to store some things out on the network and not have to put all my style definitions in my template. So on this manage tab here, right next to the style editor is this save. This will save styles back to the style library. So when I click on this, it's going to show me all of the styles that it sees that have, are different or not contained in the style library. So I can here say yes to all here. Realistically, the only thing I really want to do is I want to get this parts list with the stock location. I want to get that into the style library. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to say yes to all. That's always a little bit easier. Uh, there you can see the object defaults is seen and being changed. So let's make sure everything gets changed. We'll say OK. You'll see here it's warning me that I'm overriding styles and I can't undo this operation. So just make sure that whenever you go to do this that you are prepared to overwrite those styles. So I'll go ahead and say yes to this and I'll give my template one more save. And now let's take a look if I create a new drawing uh, of an assembly and put a parts list on it. Let's make sure that our, our style is showing up the way we, we intend it to be. Okay, so I have an assembly now and all of these files have that stock location property on them. So I'm going to go ahead and start a new drawing using my custom template. I'll create a base view. That's good enough right there. I'll go to my annotate. I'll say parts list. Pick that view. Say okay. Just drop in the upper right hand corner here. You can see there is the stock location. Each one of these files is now reporting its stock location to my parts list. So that's exactly what we want. Now, one thing I forgot to do when we were kind of finishing up saving the styles to the style library is I want to now set my project back so it is using the style library as read only. So I'm going to save this file out, close this one out. I can't make changes to my project while I have files open. That's one of the big things that you have to make sure. So now I've got everything closed out. I'll go back to projects. I can change this read write back to read only. I'll save and done. Now one thing here is with that project file, uh, I still have it checked out to me. So what I did initially is I just kind of started any old file. And realistically at this point, I don't need to get the changes I made back into the Fault because really all I did was I changed it to um, allow me to write to the style library and then I changed that setting right back to the original setting. So here I could just undo the checkout of that project file and that way everything would be back to the way it was. And if I check it back in, it's going to start alerting everybody else on my team that they are behind a version on the project file and they should get a new version. So doesn't really matter either way, but this way it's less confusion to the rest of the team as to why they need to get a new version of the project. Now, if you did make a change beyond that, then obviously you might want to check it back in and alert everybody to get a new version of the project file. I want to thank you for taking time to watch this video. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to email me. My email address is there on the screen. And as always, thanks for watching.